Hello, my name is Benjamin Roberts, and this is a very, very important message to anybody who is planning on voting for Donald Trump or is undecided. This is a warning to you, a very heartfelt warning, and I hope and pray that if you care, which I'm sure that you do, about the futures of not only yourselves but your children and the futures of everyone, that you will please give me a chance and listen to this. I hope this will reach as many people as possible. I hope it will do as much good as it possibly can. But I also record this so that my own conscience is clear. And I record this for the future so that my friends, my family, those who will come after me will know that I saw very clearly the dangers posed to this country and this world by what is currently going on under this administration. I want to say right off the bat that to everybody who is supporting Donald Trump, to everybody who's planning on voting for him, that I care about you, that I am very deeply saddened and hurt by the horrid division that's consumed this country these past four years, that has made it very, very hard to have any kind of productive conversation about the most important issues that matter. It has instead led to just hollering, shrieking about things that we should instead be able to discuss calmly, reasonably, and productively. I'd like to just ask you a few questions to start with. I'd like you to think to yourself, when you were a child, what was your idea of what a president should be? What was the image you had of a president? What did you expect from a president? Do you feel that what has been exhibited these past four years bears relation to that image that you had? If you're like me and most of us, the image that you'd have is of someone who would lead by example, someone who had a very clear direction for the country and for the world, somebody who was wise and kind and caring, Someone who brought out the best in each of us. And most of all, a real president, a real leader, is someone who empowers you to be your best self. Somebody who believes in you. Someone who brings out the very best in you. Someone who helps you understand that in America, the most important position is citizen, not president. And so I'd like to ask you, do you feel that Donald Trump has been empowering you? Or have you been empowering him? Now I would like you to think about how sacred a duty it is to vote. And how sacred democracy is and what you hold in your hands. You hold in your hands what generations upon generations have sacrificed and toiled and worked for. Indeed, you hold in your hands nothing less than the very ideals and values that have created and made civilization itself. There is no more an important thing that you could devote thought care, concern, to, and to make an educated and informed decision upon. So I hope that you would choose based upon values, not based upon one man. I hope you will be loyal to right and wrong, not to one man. And I hope you will choose what is best for yourselves, your children, and the future of this country, not for one man. A great leader is the one who has clear and defined goals and pursues those goals. Well, let me tell you what my goals are, what my highest goals are in life that I would want to be remembered for. My highest goal in life would be for children to be healthy and happy and live great lives. That should be all of our highest goals. No higher priority must come before the health and well-being of children. And that's why it is so completely appalling and completely unfathomable that I must tell you that I have 
read things that are completely horrid beyond description of children around the world are dying from things that we know how to prevent. From things like hunger and diseases associated with them that are completely preventable. And this is stated by the World Food Program, by UNICEF and other UN agencies. It has escalated over these past three years. It has gotten far worse right around the beginning of Donald Trump's presidency. For the past three years, I've tried to do everything I can think of to try to help these children, to try to save lives, and to do the right thing. I've, I've tried to reach everyone I can think of to try to do this, to create a worldwide movement that can save children's lives. And so that has included sending thousands of emails to congressmen, to the media, and to the White House, and making hundreds of phone calls. Almost none of them have been responded to. Worst of all, I called the White House 55 times over a period of time to urge them to do everything possible to save children's lives, to urge them that I had read information that there was an emergency going on and that they were the only ones in the world that had the power to unify the world to do something about it. And what did they do? They hung up on me each and every single time. Fifty-five times and they hung up on me. They didn't refer me to anyone. They didn't tell me anyone I could talk to. They just hung up. What has the media been consumed by these past three, four years? Donald Trump. They've said the word Trump millions of times. But the words children are the names of the children that have died, that have needed help. They've never said those. Donald Trump's words have gotten in the way of saving lives. His complete and utter lunacy of creating an unnecessary, petty, pathetic storm of personal insults and vile degradation each day that clogs up and pollutes the airwaves when they could instead be filled with information that could save lives. He's actively made it worse through his actions. Things that are beyond horrific that he has done that have resulted in death of children. There is a post called the Global Health Security Chief, and in 2018, he got rid of that post. The Global Health Security Chief is charged, among other things, with overseeing and monitoring possible global pandemics, and he got rid of it. He cut aid to the United States Aid Agency, there is a document called the Convention on the Rights of the Child that the United Nations had gotten all the countries in the world to sign, except for us. It needed to be ratified, and they had hoped that the incoming president in 2017 would ratify it. But instead, Donald Trump has not even sent this to the Senate for them to look at. And we remain the only nation in the world that has not ratified a convention on the rights of the child. Not only that, but we violated it ourselves by separating parents and children, which the convention explicitly states is a crime. Syria. He froze aid for Syria. Palestine. He froze a program to build hospitals in Palestine. He said our only reason for being in the Middle East was to destroy, defeat, and kill ISIS. He said we get nothing out of it, and that there was nothing in there but sand and death. Well, there's a lot more in it but sand and death. There's the lives of children and their mothers and families that we could be helping, and if we did help, would build a secure future, a future without terror, without violence. There is a World Health Organization resolution for the world, for the countries of the world to sign on to and promote breastfeeding, which they said 
had the potential to save the lives of 800,000 children a year. 800,000 from breastfeeding, something that you would think would be natural, a given, non-controversial. Well, this is needed. Well, not only did Donald Trump not sign this declaration, he stepped up campaigning for milk formula companies who had contributed to his inauguration. Milk formula companies who use illegal methods to try to convince mothers in underdeveloped countries to use their formulas instead of their natural breast milk, despicably. Not only did he not sign it, he then threatened Ecuador with a military aid cut if they adopted the resolution. And because of this, countries around the world were then intimidated into not signing the resolution, and it took of all people in all countries, Vladimir Putin in Russia, to sign the declaration to make other countries feel comfortable enough to sign the most simple thing in the world, which is to say that it's good for babies to have their mother's breast milk to save their lives. We remain the only country in the world not to sign that document. There were one million people in Gaza who were depending upon the United Nations for food and water. Two-thirds of that aid was coming from the United States and he cut it off. The Centers for Disease Control shut down a vital program that helped more than three dozen developing countries detect and control the spread of infectious diseases. This is the absolute pinnacle of moral failure. It has been nothing short of excruciating for me to watch lives be put at risk and ended for nothing as one man turns the United States into nothing but a dangerous global distraction. He likes to say America first. Well, what is America, as we said? America is ideals. To truly put America first would mean to put American ideals first. Not one man and his paltry ego. Hand in hand with his complete failure that has led to the deaths of children is his complete failure to deal with an with a extreme crisis that is one and the same with the crisis of children, and that's global warming which has caused drought that has led to famine, ca caused increase in evaporation, which leads to increased worsening storms, which hit vulnerable places and populations, which then create more refugees, which creates more instability, has refused to address rising ocean levels that will create millions upon millions of more refugees, rising temperatures that are leading to increased fires here in America and across the world, that kill people, that destroy and hurt and damage. Air pollution that spews across the world kills thousands each year, kills 24,000 to 100,000 Americans each year. Pollution that infects our water supplies. Millions of Americans are exposed to contaminated and polluted water each year. We have until 2050 to get this problem under control. We have until then only a few decades to reverse the warming of this planet below a threshold that if we do not will literally mean the possibility that life could go extinct on this planet. So therefore you would think that any real leader would have this as his number one priority. But once again, not only has he ignored this, he's done every single thing sickeningly to worsen it. Cut the National Science Foundation, canceled the Paris Climate Accord, approved oil drilling in Alaska at the nation's largest bird refuge, stopped environmental impact reviews, deregulated oil, coal, and gas companies, in his own words, more than anybody ever has. In fact, they have used the words, let coal regulate itself. 
He's ended fuel efficiency standards for cars, ended the clean power plan, which the EPA's own estimates say would prevent 3,600 premature deaths, 1,700 heart attacks, and 90,000 asthma attacks among children. He's refused to ban a pesticide that's been linked to birth defects. He's allowed toxic gas to be exposed to kids. Their own study says that their coal plan would cost 1,400 American lives per year and that they could create 15 times the number of jobs where they do invest in clean energy. What we're doing here is something that will literally last for millions of years beyond us. And we're losing what should be most precious to us, what gives us our very sustenance, the planet. And it's killing people right now. It's someone who ignored, deliberately made worse, Extreme emergencies and crises, the most important issues of our time, would therefore ignore and make worse a pandemic, an emergency that would hit his own country. We have the worst death rate in the world. We have 4.5% of the world's population, but 22% of its COVID deaths. There was the admission that he always wanted to play it down. The constant telling you it'll be over soon, the calling experts like Fauci an alarmist, the discouraging people from wearing masks, not admitting that they would save lives, treating them in a dismissive way, making it a political issue when it's an issue of life and death, threatening to block school supplies to schools that don't completely reopen that would put the lives of your children in danger saying that testing should be slowed down or blocked. Why? Because it makes him look bad. He inherited 19,000 ventilators that were ready. There were 16,660 ready by the deployment of March. And by June 23rd, only 11,000 of them were distributed. There's the pushing of bogus cures, the same inject bleach and saying he didn't take responsibility for those who then did. Even if it was a joke, there's absolutely nothing funny about using the most powerful podium in the world to say completely stupid and insane things like that. There was the pushing of hydroxychloroquine. A Phoenix man died after drinking chloroquine phosphate, thinking it was that, because how much incessantly he had pushed that. In fact, and pushed it so, pushed it so excessively and incessantly, that there is an investigation into the fact that perhaps he could be strong-arming people into saying that it was safe. Well, the Inspector General of the Health and Human Services Department, who was leading that investigation, was then dismissed. It was clear that hospital studies found that those had a, who took it had a higher risk of dying than didn't, and in fact, it is needed for malaria, and the increased demand for it because of what he said meant that people who needed it for malaria therefore then did not get it, which caused death from malaria. He likes to say that a vaccine is on its way. Well, it would have been nice then had he not disbanded the National Vaccine Program Office when he came into office. He likes to say that he banned travel from China and that Joe Biden said, oh, don't do that. Well, that's not true. Not true at all. Biden, when he said we'd have no time for xenophobia, was talking about Donald Trump's incessant use of the words China virus and Kung flu, saying that we can't discriminate against our Asian friends merely because this virus originated in China. He was behind 45 other countries in banning travel from China. He was no visionary in banning travel from China. And if we didn't need any more proof of the lethality and dangerousness of this virus, the most heavily protected man in the world, the man who bungled his response to it, was then infected by it, hours before having said that it was at its end. On the day that he was flown to the hospital with COVID-19, there were 44,000 cases, 880 deaths in this country. None will get care like him. They'll die in crowded hospitals, many of them alone. 
Imagine how they and their families must feel when the President of the United States continues to demean this virus and behave so erratically. There have been many thousands of people that have been on their deathbeds that are no longer with us. And that's a time when you begin to think who you are, what's important to you, what do you want to be remembered for. Well, what should be remembered is that we did everything we could to save them, that we treated this with seriousness, that we honored their memories and their lives by not rewarding the person who did not respect them in their lives or the virus with another term. In those original press briefings that he held, over, over a period of 13 hours of speaking, 13 hours, it was shown that he spent less than 4.5 minutes on any condolences to the families of the people that lost their loved ones. He's blind to you and your problems. He can only see his own warped ego. That's why this previous Friday we've had the highest amount of cases ever, 83,000. And on that very same, same day, he still said we're rounding the turn. <clears throat> There are the rallies that he continues to shamefully hold. That if you're attending, you're putting your safety at risk. People in the future will look back and they will say, how could it be possible when someone did so much hurtful behavior, so epically failed on such a grand scale to respond, to show empathy, to do his job? How could it be that in the midst of a pandemic, thousands flock to cheer and see that man? and put their lives and the lives of their families at risk by doing so, flouting distancing and mask restrictions. COVID-19 had the opportunity to make the world a kinder place, to bring people together in the shared understanding that life is vulnerable and that we all depend upon one, one another for survival, to comfort those grieving, it had the opportunity to make people see the emergency and crisis of issues of children and climate. It had the opportunity to unite people and bring people together. And that's what makes it so galling and insane that this man would continue behaving in such a despicable way in the midst of this emergency. This kind of leadership of abandoning accountability and blaming others and not showing care and concern. The memory of it does not go away. The stain of it lasts forever. The failure of this and the memory of it will never go away. It will linger in generations yet unborn, the families who died. And they will want to know, and they will know, whether you stood by and supported the man who failed in such a grievous, horrific way. Our two highest ideals, equality and freedom, are not only under attack, but in danger of being lost. After George Floyd's death, he had one sole job, and that was to comfort those who were hurting from this, and to let them know that it would never be tolerated or allowed again and that he would take immediate action to prevent this racist brutality from ever occurring again in this country. I want you to think, what led to those riots? What is the kind of behavior that causes such instability that led to those riots? It's the gaping gap of leadership, empathy, and concern that then allowed people to, instead of finding an outlet in a productive way, to do it in a destructive way because they felt like there was no one in power who understood them. In fact, they feel justifiably so that the man in power is a racist himself who doesn't care about these issues. There's zero excuse for any racism, any hint of racism from the President of the United States. Bear that in mind when the President of the United States begins his campaign by calling Mexicans coming across the border murderers, rapists, and drug dealers, when he calls for a ban 
on the entire population of Muslims of the world when he attacks the Black Lives Matter movement and ignores that blacks are killed at far greater rate than whites, when he refuses to denounce David Duke and the KKK and the Proud Boys, when he pardons a racist sheriff, Joe Arpaio, who abused horribly Latino immigrants, when he attacks American heroes like Elijah Cummings and John Lewis, refuses to denounce the Confederate flag, relentlessly supports statues of people like Lee, who are willing to murder to keep slavery, when he uses profanity to attack black football players protesting racial injustice, when he inflames the violence by attacking protesters instead of offering solutions, when he encourages his supporters to chant send her back about a congresswoman of color, when he endorses border patrol agents firing tear gas and rubber bullets at unarmed families with children trying to cross to come into this country to seek a better life. Now, he may have signed certain things that he enjoys telling you that he signed. That doesn't mean he was behind them. That doesn't mean he understands them. And the things he signed have yet to be proven to be effective. The truth is, is that President Obama and his Vice President Biden commuted more sentences than he did. He, in fact, has rolled back programs to combat bias against black people within the justice system. He stopped a program meant to stop housing discrimination. A plan to reduce racial disparity in schools has been scrapped. He's instructed prosecutors to seek maximum sentences. And he killed a police department reform program. There were 10,000 clemency petitions pending when President Obama left office. He has only granted clemency to 25. Most egregiously of all these things was the statement that there were many fine people on both sides. After Nazis were marching in the streets of America and killed a woman, Heather Heyer, contrast that statement, his treatment of Nazis, white supremacists, with statements he's made about Black Lives Matter and people peacefully protesting. Democracy is on the line itself. Eva Schloss, Anne Frank's stepsister, who has been touring around this country trying to get people to learn from the worst atrocity in history and facing considerable racist bigotry from people as she does so. Well, she is someone that deserves to be listened to. Someone who lived through unspeakable evil. And this is a direct quote from her. We have in the United States a leader who is acting like another Hitler. Now what do we mean by that? What does she mean by that? We do not mean, certainly, that we assume that Donald Trump or anyone in the administration has plans for a genocide or a war. That's not what it means. What it means is that totalitarianism led to that genocide and war. And in the end, all totalitarian forms of government resemble each other. The things that lead to them resemble each other. And those are things that we are seeing in America today. Demonizing groups and showing no empathy for those suffering. Attacking the free press. Demanding personal loyalty. Lying. 20,000 lies. Interfering with elections to prolong power. Cult of personality. <clears throat> Protecting the autocrat from any form of prosecution. Nationalistic, militaristic. Wearing people down under an exhausting barrage so that they become accustomed to the tyranny. Attacking and demeaning anybody who opposes him. Another sign. Building walls. That's obvious. Cruelty. Finally, using police and military against domestic perceived enemies. Those who come after us will see that tape. They'll see that tape of those people being plowed down for no reason. 
of the President of the United States having ordered an attack on his own people. Do you want them to know that you supported such a man? So not only has he done this to us at home, but he has supported those who are already dictators and despots abroad. And he has abandoned our allies of democracy. You have to understand the effect that this has, the far-reaching effect into everyone's lives. These people who live under these regimes, these police states, these dictatorships, for them, oppression is not a abstract term of discussion. It's an everyday living reality. And our allies, the Kurds, who'd helped us in the fight against ISIS to be attacked by Erdogan in Turkey in a gruesome, what many called ethnic cleansing that then displaced 130,000 people. It was an act of sickening, unforgivable treachery. Saudi Arabia has waged a brutal war on Yemen, killing children, killing innocent people, bombing them to oblivion in a horrific crime against humanity. And what has Donald Trump done? He's provided them with arms to continue doing it. Talking of violence and bombs, to the, the deepest responsibility that a president has, our president has, that he shouldn't have, mind you, the ability to use nuclear weapons. The most awful, horrific weapon known to man is in the hands of Donald Trump. He said that he might use a nuclear bomb in the Middle East. He said that the minimum I want them to think I'll use it. He said he couldn't rule out using them anywhere else, including Europe, because, quote, Europe is a big place. He's built up the nuclear arsenal more than any president since the Cold War ended. He wants nuclear testing. He's pulled out of a treaty with Russia that Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev signed to limit nuclear weapons. And most vividly of all, he brought us to the very brink of nuclear war with his fire and fury statements completely unnecessary and inflammatory to North Korea. The bulletin, the, the, the bulletin of atomic scientists set their doomsday clock closer to midnight under Donald Trump than at any time since 1953. Quite obviously, he has no self-control. And if you have no control of yourself, how are you fit to have control over anything else, let alone nuclear bombs? Now I want you to ask yourself, what is your definition of a great country? That statement, make America great again. What, is, what would a great country be? I'm assuming it would be a country where everyone has a good standard of living, where everyone's well taken care of, where there's not homelessness and hunger. Well, that certainly can't be said, more now than ever. But once again, not only has he ignored those problems, he has done everything in his power to hurt you and your family. Cut housing assistance. Rural health assistance, assistance to needy families, assistance to the elderly. He's eased penalties against nursing homes that harm their residents. He's repealed the Safety in the Workplace Act. He's cut children's health, repealing the rights of disabled persons to sue for violation of access. Even the World Trade Center Health Program. Well... He attempted to reshuffle it, to separate doctors from their patients that were familiar with their conditions. He rolled back an Obama rule that made it harder for those with mental health issues to get guns that was put in place after Sandy Hook. And then he cut the National Institute of Mental Health. And I want you to understand that this not only hurts the people here, it hurts people around the world. It hurts the way if we treat our people like this, if we don't invest in these programs to help people, how can we expect anyone else to? How can we expect other countries to set better housing standards? How can we expect other countries 
to take care of homelessness and hunger if we can't do it right here and if the President of the United States makes an active effort to end things that are helping people and hurt you. He's counting on his ability to whip you up into a frenzy. And he's counting on his ability to make you afraid of other things and not afraid of him, which you should be. Things I've just said to you, all of them, clearly mean he should not have one single supporter. He should lose in the biggest landslide in history because he has hurt the country he's charged with protecting and he has hurt the world. Now let me ask you something. If a Democrat did any of the things that I have just told you about, would you condone that? Would you be all right with that? Well, you shouldn't be all right with it when someone who claims to be a Republican does it, because he's not a Republican. This election is not about Republican and Democrat. It's about right and wrong. It's about you stepping back and seeing not two men, but good and evil and the effect that this is having on people's lives. He demeans the party with perfunctory embraces of its policies, claims to uh, support life in one area, but he hurts it in all others. He has caused your minds to become twisted to the point where you have become the very thing that the Republican Party said for so many years it standed against, and that is subservience, blind, loyal subservience to a president in power no matter what. On every issue of importance to you, border security, protection of the Second Amendment, good care for vet veterans, and adequate defense, you can have those things. And you can have those things because all those things are just listed are things that can be done through compromise. Donald Trump has brought in each side to such an extreme they think that they can't compromise, they think they're enemies and can't get along. Well, the only way you'll be able to make progress on those issues is if you get along and compromise and come to a better understanding. That's never going to happen under Donald Trump. The military, the military, you cannot have this man lead the military. You cannot have, you cannot expect people in the military to take commands from someone so unbalanced and erratic so ignorant, so cruel, someone who has no idea about the risks and the sacrifices that people in uniform have made for the country. And the greatest danger of weakness within the military and within the country is not, in fact, weakness of arms, it's weakness of spirit. The arms are only a reflection of the spirit. The arms are there to defend the people with the spirit. And if this people lose the spirit of freedom, it makes despots think they can take the world to the brink, which they've done before when the spirit of freedom has lagged low. Having Donald Trump as the commander of the United States military does nothing but degrade the sacrifices that all the troops have made and are making for you and your family and the country and the world. There is no more evidence of the fact that he has failed you, failed the country, and failed the world than the fact that all he can do is attack, demean, and lie about Joe Biden. Joe Biden would not end the police. He would not give free reign to rioters. He wouldn't end your Second Amendment. He wouldn't end your religion. He's not corrupt like Donald Trump is. It was him who corruptly tried to strong-arm Ukraine into mounting a fake hit job on Joe Biden. That's not something you do if you're confident that you've done the right thing and you can stand on your own record to win. He will not end American energy. He'll transition from fossil fuels to clean energy, which is a much more productive and good choice for the whole country. As I've clearly explained, there should be zero controversy over Joe Biden saying that he will transition from oil. It is a matter of life and death for you, your family, the country, and the world. <clears throat> He'll not allow anyone to control himself but himself. He will stand up to China. How would Donald Trump ever stand up to China when China's president makes himself president for life and Donald Trump says 
he should be credited for it. And gee, maybe we could do that here. He'll not cede control of our border to criminals and cartels. Joe Biden will not attack you or the things you care about. He's personally opposed to abortion, and he's opposed to federal government involvement in abortion. You will be safe in Joe Biden's America. Joe's life experience has given him profound empathy and respect for those going through suffering. And that makes him a perfect choice to be able to lead us at this moment. Joe will lead us through COVID by listening to science, encouraging masks and social distancing. He'll have a firm and disciplined plan that he will carry out with focus. And he will use this to unify the country and show deep empathy and love we so desperately need. He will be able to listen because he cares about you and not about himself. He will be there to help, not to glorify himself. Therefore, he'll be able to save kids' lives around the world. He can pass the Reach Every Mother and Child Act, something that I have called Congress on countless times, telling them to pass, and what have they done? It's been sitting in committee since Donald Trump became president. He will, in fact, heal the wounds of this country, and he will heal the racial division with clear words of love and tolerance coming from the most powerful position in the world. He's somebody you can trust to stand up in the world for right and wrong. He's somebody you can trust with important decisions of life and death for you and your family. <clears throat> He's somebody you can trust to elevate the real heroes of America, you, not the president, you, the people who every day quietly and kindly do things to help others, not aggrandize yourself. Those are the real heroes of America. Under Joe Biden, we can enter into a period of forgiveness instead of this bitterness that's consumed these past four years. Many of your fellow citizens, they've been literally traumatized and crying deeply emotionally disturbed by these last four years. Stand with them. Embrace them. Embrace a future with a deeper and better relationship with them. Not one man and his insanity. Joe Biden will make America love again. And a vote for Joe Biden is literally a vote to save democracy, the country, and the world. There are possibilities and opportunities everywhere if we will only seize them. There are goals that are highly worthy of your enthusiasm and your dedication that are waiting for you to grasp hold of them and act upon them. We can enter an amazing new era for our country and the world. We can save millions of lives and kids and people and all over the world and end hunger, end want. We can stop global warming. We can end war, waste racism, and despotism forever. We can springboard a flowering of democracy and development for billions of people across the world. We can create a new flourishing and respect and love for human life, particularly for the most vulnerable, the youngest, and the unborn. We can cure diseases, and yes, we can triumph over COVID. <clears throat> but none of that will happen under Donald Trump. He doesn't have that love for you or the world. And that's why we've been riding in the same moronic cycle for the past four years. And it's up to you to realize that red lines, the reddest of red lines, relating to the health of children, the world, you and your family, they have been crossed. And it is up to you to turn back. It is up to you to realize that you can no longer support this man. The longer it goes, the, the harder it is to admit that you were wrong, to pull back. Right now, admit you are wrong and pull back. It's all a matter of using our time well. And those days, the days now in the past, could have been crammed full of opportunity, love, helping, 
instead of chaos, confusion, and ineptitude. Donald Trump's time as president is brief, whether for four or eight years in the scheme of things. It's not about him. It's about the actions and beliefs that he takes that speak to who we are as a people. There are decisions that echo through time. There are principles acted or abandoned that reverberate throughout history. Real power is not in an office or a man, but real power is principles and actions taken on behalf of them. And these things will remain just as true decades from now as they are now. Everything I've said tonight will be just as true then as it was now, just as it would be true decades ago. The only thing that will be different decades from now is you will have made a decision as to where you stand in regards to this. We have plummeted to grotesque depths. You shouldn't have to worry each day about what the president says. You shouldn't have to view those who differ with your opinion as the enemy. You shouldn't be filled with worry, fear, anger, and hate each day, those things that are so not only mentally unhealthy, but physically unhealthy. There shouldn't be a constant storm swirling around the president of the United States. The good news is, is that faith, peace, and love are more powerful than any of those negative things. And the good news is, is that you can make a choice for a president and Joe Biden, who will be a guider of a goals, of goals and an agenda that's healthy and helpful to you. He's put the stain of his brokenness permanently on our history. And it is beneath you to have your name associated with such a barbaric, vulgar, and insane man. When you, when people are cheering him at those rallies, make no mistake, you're cheering someone who has blood on his hands. You should instead be cheering on the vulnerable. You should be cheering on those who need it. How do you think the kids that he's hurt feel, seeing you cheer this man and not them? Children and people all over the world look in hope to this country, and what did they see but a, a face contorted by rage, ego, and mania? Is that what you want them to see? You owe them an apology. <clears throat> and you owe yourselves an apology, because you mark yourself no better than him by supporting him. I believe that you're better than him. I believe you have the strength to say to him, you are a liar. I believe you can shake off the dust and grime from yourselves, act worthy of yourselves, and pass on lovingly a good future to your children. I believe that you can say right here and now, enough is enough. Because anything else would be the greatest stupidity I can fathom. I want you to think of those children not yet born. What kind of a world will they find when they come into this world? Will they be proud of what you've left to them? Or will they see a, a world filled with angry faces and yelling, yelling voices and confusion and fear? Children are looking to you. They're looking to you to see whether you let bitter divides define democracy or whether right and wrong does. They're watching to see whether you place more importance on terms than on the challenges that confront each and every single one of us. And those children will grow up in, in the future one day. And make no mistake, it is my firm belief that support for this man will one day be viewed as, as anti-American as support for the Confederacy. I'd like you to think of everything I've just said, all of the horror that I've described. This has all been done when he knows that he has to face you for re-election for a second term. Imagine how he would act when he did not have that safeguard on him. It had never been 
a more clear choice between good or evil than in this country than since Abraham Lincoln ran against a man who supported slavery. There is literally no reason in the world for you to vote for him and every reason in the world for you to vote against him. If the things I've talked about tonight do not warrant removal, then nothing else does, and that sets us on a very dangerous and dark path. Make no mistake, it would mean death for children, death for many more by COVID, a climate on fire, a future on fire, instability throughout the world, and indeed, the end of the principles in America that made America, America. It would be watching America die in the empty eyes of a very empty man. But, if we reclaim our values, we can be the hope of the whole world and of history. Without them, we're just a point on a map. But we're not a point on a map. Those values will endure, whether you act on them now or not. If you don't, then history will record with tremendous, tremendous horror and astonishment that the people who had the greatest things of life willingly handed them over. To a madman. To come this far only to sacrifice everything we've done on the altar of a broken man's ego would be the most gut-wrenching way for this country to go down. There used to be a saying uh, that we, uh, that people would say at uh, election time uh, in this country, and that was Give us a man to match our mountains. And I would add today, of course, you could give us a woman to match our mountains, too. And what it meant was that someone who... Mountains are glorious and they're never changing because principles of right are glorious and never changing. Well, Donald Trump is certainly not a man to match our mountains, but he does match many things. The things that he match are angry faces, friendships and family broken, crying kids, caskets, glows of devices over talking, smoky skies, stolen time and innocence, panicked nerves and high-strung hearts and minds. And if you can't see that, then I genuinely pity you. A fog has descended over this country during Donald Trump's presidency, and we're lost at sea in that fog. But we can right now leave it for a very bright and shining horizon. Winston Churchill said if we, if we do our duty and we prevail, then life can move forward into broad, sunlit uplands. But if we fail, then the world will sink into the abyss of a new dark age, made all the more sinister by perverted silence. So I urge you, do not be silent in the face of this evil. Stand up. Reclaim your dignity, your self-respect. Who will you stand with? The children, the world, the planet, the future, the health, those who have died, those who are sick with COVID, all the heroes of our past like Martin Luther King Jr. and Abraham Lincoln, and the hopes and dreams of the future, or one pathetic man. You can stand with that man who fills four or eight years with hurt, and confusion, anger, and fear. Or you can stand with ideals that will be true forever and that will fill the world with goodness, hope, 
love, freedom, life, and light. What unites us all is stronger than what divides us. People all over the world want what you want. And there are heroes everywhere, ready to take bold and heroic action to accomplish great things for love and justice. If you right now reclaim your independence, you will be making a decision that indeed transcends time because it will forever be everlastingly right, good, and true. The world right now sees us as a very disturbed country to be able to put someone so deeply disturbed into that office. You put him there. He has no power except what you give him. And you can right now redeem yourself. So, for yourselves, and for your children, and for your children's children, I urge you with every fiber of my being, vote Donald Trump out of office and vote for Joe Biden. End this nightmare of a presidency. If you do not, make no mistake. I, myself, the people of this country, the people of the world and the people of the future, will hold you responsible for the damage that it causes. I want to be able to tell my children and grandchildren of the future that when such horrible, awful things were done by the President of the United States, that the American people rose up in righteous might and threw him out of the office. I do not want to be able to tell them that they were cowards and kowtowed to one man's ego. If in fact you have already voted, know that it is not too late. You can request them to send you back your ballot and make the right choice. And these following states in fact encourage you to do it. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, and Mississippi. And you should call if you live in any other states and you have voted for Donald Trump and you now want to change your vote, you should Call them, request for you to be able to vote on another ballot and invalidate the original ballot. Please spread this far and wide in any way you possibly can. People deserve to know the truth. You deserve to have respect enough for yourselves to be able to know that you can change your opinion based on what is right for yourselves in the future. Spread this to any Republicans you know. Spread this to any supporters of Donald Trump that you know. Spread this to any news media in any way that you know. My goal would be for this to play on every network, these messages to reach everybody it possibly can, because I want to save the country and I want to save lives. And if you want to save lives as well, call your congressman or woman and tell them to sign on and pass the Reach Every Mother and Child Act. And as well as that, go to your phone and find an app called Share the Meal, where you can download the app and you can help feed a child who needs it for the day. Spread Share the Meal and make the right decision. I love you all. God bless you. And God bless America and the world. Thank you for listening.